Hey Wisecrack, Jared here in the flesh this time. You guys may or may not know this, but Wisecrack editions take a really long time to make. And we've been wanting to do something where we can quickly react to what's currently on TV or in theaters, so we figured we'd try it out with season three of Rick and Morty. And hey, if you like this, let us know. We'd love to do these on things like Game of Thrones, Stranger Things, whoever this Jake Paul person is, you name it. In Rick Mancing the Stone, we see Rick, Summer, and Morty traversing a Mad Max-inspired post-apocalypse. What struck me most about this episode was an idea that has popped up in previous episodes, but hasn't been as fleshed out as fan favorites like Existence is Pain and Everything You Believe is Bullshit. Scientifically, traditions are an idiot thing. That idea? Modern alienation. Through a bright glowing rock, a mustachioed murderer, and Jerry, the episode explores another depressing as fuck idea, that society may be slowly destroying our souls. Welcome to this Wisecrack quick take on Rick Mancing the Stone, and of course, spoilers ahead. But first, a quick recap. Rick, Morty, and Summer infiltrate the aptly named Death Stalkers to steal a glowing rock that Rick wants for science. Morty and Summer use this aggressive world to vent all their confused emotions about their parents' divorce. Summer does all kinds of acting out, then falls for a swole dude with a bucket on his head and eventually goes through her own divorce. Oh, there he is. There's the nihilistic brute I married. Allowing her to contextualize her parents' separation. Morty vents his frustration by living vicariously through a revenge-driven arm and eventually realizes he should just let it go. Maybe the lesson we've learned is that whether it's our parents' marriage, a glowing green rock, or an awesome giant arm, sooner or later, we gotta let it go. And Rick acts like a child, kind of. My daughter's going through a divorce and I am not dealing with it in a healthy way at all. Early in the episode, we hear Rick introduce the idea of alienation. But if you're really that alienated, I'm as willing to exploit it as the next guy, church, army, or Olympic gymnastics trainer. Suggesting that Summer's tension with Jerry has made her disillusioned. And the only thing that can make her feel alive is to travel to a place where civilization has crumbled. Now the clever thing here is that the show not only tackles alienation on a micro level, the family kind that Summer and Morty experience, but on a macro level, the alienation of society as a whole. And through this, the show frames how we lose agency in our everyday lives. Case in point, Jerry. I think this quote informs a lot of what's going on in this episode. To live is to risk it all. Otherwise, you're just an inert chunk of randomly assembled molecules drifting wherever the universe blows you. Oh, I'm sorry, Jerry. I didn't see you there. How much of that did you hear? What Rick is not so subtly suggesting is Jerry's complete and utter lack of personal resolve, power, agency, whatever you want to call it. He's a doormat to the world. This idea of powerlessness informs a lot of Morty's resentment towards Jerry, as evidenced by this. All you had to do was go away! Stop standing in the driveway talking about custody! And either tell her you want to stay married, or get on with your life, but whatever you do, stop being a baby and act like a man! And this. I think if Dad really wanted to be here, he'd stop at nothing to make that happen. You know, maybe Dad just doesn't want you back, or maybe he just doesn't have the strength to fight. In, in either case, He's got his life, I got mine. But Morty's bitterness goes much further than Jerry's failed marriage, and that's because, in some ways, Jerry is the everyman of the modern world. Since the days of the Industrial Revolution, people have been complaining about loss of control in the modern world. Instead of having our own trade or farm, many toil away at monotonous jobs. This loss of autonomy is reflected on by countless authors, scholars, and films, but we might as well just throw this example at you. I see all this potential. Nessie swung. God damn it, an entire generation pumping gas, waiting tables, slaves with white collars, advertising has us chasing cars and clothes, working jobs we hate so we can buy shit that we don't need. We're the middle children of history, man. No purpose or place. And this is what frames Morty's anger at Jerry's powerlessness. Jerry is the pinnacle of modern stoogery. His existence as a cog in a meaningless machine is really driven home in the Rickshank Redemption, where the Galactic Federation keeps everyone compliant and docile through a liberal use of pharmaceuticals. The Galactic Federation taking over Earth? Best thing that's ever happened to this family. I just got my sixth promotion this week and I still don't know what I do. In other words, Jerry is so bad at being a person, he thrives in a society devoid of freedom. Summer, show your father some respect. He's pulling down a six-chewable figure income. 
His inability to assert himself is put on display in every interaction he has with Rick. Of course, there is a version of Jerry who isn't in Rick's words, an inert chunk of randomly assembled molecules drifting wherever the universe blows. And that would be Jerry from Cronenberger. When stripped of the trappings of modern society, Jerry goes from being a useless hack in a loveless marriage to a total badass who seems to be keeping his marriage together. This in itself is hilarious, but with this latest episode, I think Rick and Morty is playing with this idea that the trappings of modern society are inherently alienating and create Jerry's out of all of us. After Rick introduces electricity to the wasteland, it soon resembles a modern industrialized society. Summer's violent lifestyle has been traded in for everyday banalities. She isn't out murdering mutants, she's grocery shopping for human bits. The savagery of the Deathstalkers has been reduced to complaining about recycling, and Hemorrhage, the murdering machine, is now a good-for-nothing couch potato. You haven't moved since I left to scavenge this morning. What's so clever here is the implication that modern comforts are what drive our banal, terrible lives. With no mutants to fend off, people resort to bickering about trivialities. We noticed that you've been putting scrap metal in the blue bin. I got it. Due to electricity, people aren't murdering each other in the Blood Dome, they're watching Blood Dome. See, most post-apocalyptic fiction functions as a cautionary tale of how awful our lives might become. But of course, being the darkest show on TV, Rick and Morty goes out of its way to prove that modern life is its own special brand of soul crushing. Our comforts eventually alienate us from meaning, creating different kinds of misery. Or as Rick says about ruining Summer's marriage, Grandpa just sped things up with a few creature comforts of modern society. So here's an interesting question that's a bit speculative, but does Summer forgive her father because she sees that modernization turns every man into an actionless lump, even if you're a post-apocalyptic badass? Now, I wanna speculate a little bit about Jerry here. It's likely that Rick will stay the same old uncaring ass he's ever been. But I think we're gonna see a lot of character growth in his family members, specifically Jerry. What if he has a Tyler Durden moment with the Cronenberg Jerry? What if he, like Edward Norton, goes from being a disaffected modern buffoon to a man of action? I mean, the show has countless references to popular cinema, and I think a Fight Club shout out would work perfect for Jerry's season three arc. But hey, I guess we're just gonna have to see as season three continues. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. If you wanna hear more about this week's Rick and Morty episode, we actually just released the first episode of the Wisecrack podcast, where we talk all about, you guessed it, Rick and Morty. So click the link in the description to check out our podcast and let us know what you think. We've got more Rick and Morty stuff coming out, so make sure to subscribe. Squanch y'all later. Peace.